Hello guys, hope all of you are doing great. In this part of the video, we'll be talking about procedures in 8086. And if you know any other programming languages like CC programming, then the concept of procedures, they are very much similar to the concept of functions in those programming languages. So, and well, let's say, for example, you are writing a C program and then you are repeatedly writing or using a block of code again and again in that program then instead of writing that block of code again and again in that program what you can do is you can write that block of code or you can define that block of code block of code as a function as a separate function here like that and then what you can do is instead of writing that entire block of code you can just call it like you know like okay that block of code is given a name say for example f1 you can call that function wherever you want to write that block of code you can call that function and your work is done you know, and what is the advantage of this approach? It is code reuse. So certainly, instead of writing the same code again and again in multiple different places, we are reusing the code. We wrote the code only once and then we are reusing it. And it helps us to, you know, rectify problems in our program. That is, say, for example, you, you found a, suppose you are taking this particular approach and you found a mistake in the block of code. In that case, suppose you're not using, making use of the concept of functions. In that case, you have to write, you have to go to each and every portion there and you have to, you know, um, modify your code. And if you leave anything for whatever the reason, then that will be some, that will create at least some sort, uh, you know, uh, some amount of inconsistency in your code. So if you take the approach of functions, in that case, since your code is written only once in one place, whatever the modification you do immediately it will be available in all these different places so certainly this code reuse helps us a lot and we want that thing to achieve in 8086 programming also and easy maintenance as i said you know like obviously now you can imagine what are the advantages of this thing so the main point that i want to tell you right now is that 8086 procedures they are conceptually they are very much similar to the concepts of functions in any other high level programming languages okay then let's now see dive into the details of procedures how do we write procedures in 8086 programming and let's uh, you know, understand procedures uh, with some uh, real examples okay then let's begin today's part Okay guys, then we are in Visual Studio Code Editor and right now the selected folder is TASM 1.4 and uh, this is the basic skeleton of uh, any 8086 program basically that we write, okay? And now let's uh, come to the main point here. Our main point is that writing a procedure, so, okay? How do we write a procedure? So let's start with this program first. Suppose we have a string here, like, you know, string db. Say, for example, you just consider hello world. And for some reason, that string we have to display at two different places uh, in, in the program. So what do we do? How do we display a string? So the first thing that we have to do is if we want to display a string we know like first we have to load the effective address of the string to the x register say str1 and then we will be uh and then we'll do like uh, interrupt service routine right so for example first that first thing is we have to store 09h in a h register 09h in a h register and then we have to call this int um 21 in 21h okay so that will display the string which is pointed by this dx register on the screen let's first execute this program and then we'll move into the details okay sorry where is it okay let's first uh, uh compile the program so tasm tasm and the name of the program is ytp16 so ytp16 dot asm you can see there is no error no warning so we are good to go so t link and ytp16 the name only you have to give you do not have to give the extension i know people know that once it is done you can execute the program and you can check it how to execute you just write the name of the program ytp16 in this case and then you will see hello world is being displayed on the screen that's fine good we already know that actually there is nothing new in that but now say for example we want to display the same string once again then what we'll be doing is okay we'll be like uh, you know writing the same code once again there and we'll display the same string once again there isn't it 
now suppose since now we are seeing like a block of code we are executing again and again so uh, what we want to do is we want to put that block of code into a procedure and then we want to call that procedure now let's get into the details like okay suppose we want to do that now how do how do how we are going to put this block of code into a procedure so for that reason what you have to do is first thing is you have to give the procedure a name any name you can think of you can give it say for example i'm calling it say for example display string this is the name of my procedure okay and then you have to write this directive called proc this says okay that is the uh, the the name of the procedure this is the name of the procedure okay and you know the semicolon when we write that is a comment that is how you write comment in h086 so this part is basically comment it is same as like suppose you're writing c programming then you would have written that thing as this okay so display string is the name of the procedure procedure okay and this c proc is the uh, assembler directive that says okay that is a procedure okay okay first let's see the basic skeleton of it so what is the minimum thing that you have to write to you know write a valid procedure in 86 so once you uh, sort of define the procedure the the last statement of the procedure always should be return see here this statement says that okay now that is this is the time to transfer the control back from the place where it was being called okay so if things are not very clear right now don't worry it's just let it go and at some point of time it might become clear okay and then at the end what you have to do is you have to mark the end of the procedure just by writing the name of the procedure and then this assembler directive that's all so this is the basic skeleton of defining a procedure okay so here this is the name of the procedure this is the directive that says okay that is a procedure and then return statement ret instruction you always have to execute when it is the as the last line of the procedure and then you have to mark the end of the procedure by writing this link that is this is again the same name this procedure and here it is something like that okay now it is the time to uh, write the code of the procedure okay so what we want to do inside the procedure that is the, this part here okay so if you write a procedure then always you'll be starting with something like this obviously this name will be yours but the basic skeleton you'll start with this and then whatever it is that you want to do inside that procedure the actual block of code you'll be writing it here in this place clear okay great now what do you want to do here so we want to basically we want to execute these two lines of code you might be thinking so why didn't you copy the first line i mean why didn't you load the effective address of the string to dx that part why didn't you bring it here but you see here whatever it is the string that we want to display so that is not part of the procedure actually we'll be doing it externally it is sort of like we are passing you know the value or parameters to the functions sort of like that okay so it will always display function will always assume it will see here it will it will just let me write a comment here it will assume that the string string is pointed by pointed by the x resistor okay resistor so in that case only task left is left is like okay store this 9h uh, to a h register and then call this interrupt service routine and that's all that's all it will do the work okay now let's see oh, we have defined this procedure uh now let's see how to call that procedure you see here uh in this c programming language example if you see the first thing is this definition is this see here here also you have a name and then this is the body of the function sort of like that so the conceptually uh, equivalent component you can find in a086 procedure that is done this is the definition of the procedure now what about this part now here see in c programming not only defining the function is enough you have to actually call the function if you really want to execute the block of code inside that function the same thing is here also in a086 programming so what you do is suppose now this is you have loaded the effective address of the string to the x register now you want to display it so what you'll be doing is you'll be making use of this instruction call call and then the name of the procedure so name of the procedure is this call display string that's all that's all you're calling now as soon as you do that this procedure will be called and whatever the instructions you have written inside this procedures procedure that part will be executed okay and then 
what you do is see here if you suppose if i try to execute this program let's see what happens when we execute this program okay like we have written up to this part and uh, let's see what happens when we execute this this program okay just a second sorry control minus i want to reduce the size so that i can show you the entire code in one go so this is the code actually so here we just wrote we stored the effective address into the string uh, we stored the effective address of the string into the x register then we have we don't want to do this actually just you know we don't need this part of the code okay so uh, in the basic skeleton we loaded this uh, effective address in dx and then we're calling this display string procedure and the display string procedure is from this point to this point done and then this terminate program this is just the you know just the level i have i have given here to this block of code but it is not used right now let's see what happens when we execute this program do we get the output as expected or not okay so let's see that thing first and then we'll move forward so uh, first thing is again you have to tasum and then the name of the program compile the program here you can see no error no warning so link the program and then execute the program okay now we are executing this program and we're seeing hello world hello world twice but was it expected let's see what our what our expectation was we have loaded the initial address i mean the starting address of the string to dx and then we're calling display string okay display string i guess it is working fine it is it is calling that interrupt service routine by storing 9h uh, to the ah register that says that okay whatever it is pointed by dx print it on the screen that's done okay and then return means the control will be returned to the next instruction now see you, sh you should realize that when you execute a program it will always uh, do sort of a free fall Okay, so although this return statement returns the uh, control back here, the next instruction, the next instruction itself is the definition of the function. So once again, it executes these lines of code and once again, it displays the string on the screen. So for that reason, you, you can, you know, you, you are seeing twice hello world on the screen. So to get rid of this problem, what you'll be doing is you'll be writing okay once we call that display string we just don't want to uh, do a free fall here after that our program is basically over so jump to the level whose name is say for example terminate program and that's why i gave that level um, you know beforehand to this block of or this part of code there okay but you see here this this level you can give anything any name you want you can give it okay now after doing that modification let's see the output of the program so here what happened okay see the program actually got hanged not only that something else happened i guess i mean it messed up like we don't write this thing if we allow a free fall then certainly the program will not work appropriately okay so for that reason after calling this display string the next instruction that we want to execute is we don't want a free fall to happen we want our control to be transferred to this point and then from that point to the end of the program clear okay let's now um, re-execute the program i have to restart that tasum program okay tasum is back so tasum y actually y tube program 16 dot y tube means youtube program 16 dot asm done no error no messages uh, so uh, link it the link y YTU program 16 16 dot that's all you don't need to write asm and then call the program YTU or youtube video program 16 that's all and it's showing you hello world exactly once and after that the program is terminated normally see it's not hanged or anything like that got it so now suppose we want to display the string twice at two different places so what we'll be doing is okay call display string once and i want to display another call so uh, display string i'm calling again the same display string but suppose this time the second time when we call display string i want to display a different string okay so for that reason let's declare another string variable here and um, for simplicity here we will be okay just no let's let's write a different message here so welcome welcome to 8086 or something okay and then what we want is uh, we want like this number 10 also to be there after the string so that it becomes a new line when you print it so it's like that and then some dollars okay 
So now our goal is uh, we want to display this string two on the screen just by calling display string method here. Okay, so we are calling display string. So since dx is pointing to string one, it will print string one, which is hello world. And then we want to call, we want to now display string two. So before calling uh, uh, display string two, so we have to load the effective address of string two to dx register okay so i wrote old ulta so it's like dx comma string two so load the effective address of this particular string to dx register and then call display string so it should display as the other string like welcome to age rate six on the screen as well so let's see let's execute this program so first again recompile then relink and then re-execute you can see hello world and welcome to age rate six so uh, now it should be clear why did I write this 10 there. So if I don't write 10 there, say I just write a a there, okay? Or instead of writing a, I write there a say 95. You know what is 95? 95 is the ASCII value of lowercase a. So here, if I execute this program, then uh, you will see that a coming there, okay? So TASM, the link, and this. You can see hello world. Where is it? Hello world underscore welcome. Oh, sorry, it's not 95. It is 97. I'm sorry for that. I guess it's 97. Sometimes I forget. Let's let's see. Let's see. Awesome. The link. And this. You can see hello world. And then this A is coming in between. And then welcome to A086. A is coming because of 97. 97 is the ASCII code of A. So, but if you want a new line character there, you will be writing a 10 there. It is the ASCII code of new line character. So that is why if you write a 10 there, you will basically see there a, uh, you'll see there a new line automatically appended. Hello world and then the new line and then welcome to HR86. That's just a side note I wanted to tell you. Okay, now you people now have seen how we can make use of how we can write a procedure. So you have to first write the name of the procedure followed by this assembler directive PROC proc. Then you have to write the body of the procedure, whatever it is that you want to do inside that procedure. And then last, you have to write this return instruction and followed by uh, this uh, this end procedure uh, NP assembler directive. Okay, so this is the definition of the procedure and then whenever you want to execute that procedure You'll be making use of this instruction call and then followed by the name of the procedure Clear? Okay, I guess if people have understood up to this point if you have any doubts or queries Then you can write me in the comment section. We'll be doing another simple example in the next part of the video till then have a nice day